hey, hello, and good afternoon. My name is Amanda, and welcome to Harmony Portal Tarot. For today's Pick a Card reading, we are going to be figuring out a message for you in uncertain times. We are going to be breaking down the energy that is surrounding you at this time, surrounding the situation that you're currently in, the challenge you're facing as a result of this situation, and advice for overcoming this situation. So if you are new to Pick a Card readings, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to center your energy, and focus in on pile number one, two, or three, and if more than one pile calls out to you, there may be multiple messages in different piles for you. Once you've selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamps, and I'll also pin them as a top comment. Please remember though, these are general readings, so only take the information that resonates with you, your life, your situation, and just go ahead and leave the rest behind. Without delaying this any further, I'm going to give you a moment to meditate on your cards, and I will see you over at your reading. Hello, group number one. Welcome to your message for uncertain times. The reason I was inspired to do this reading is because my dog, Walter, who you might have heard in a lot of my pick of cards, um, he passed away this Monday. I'm filming this on a Thursday, so the Monday before my filming this, he actually passed away. He waited for all of us to wake up, and then he took his last breath and fell over, and I can't believe I can say this right now without crying because it's just been quite a roller coaster, but just going through life and having that dog with me for 15 years um, was a really beautiful and challenging experience all wrapped into one. So, um, you know, not every challenging situation is all bad or all good. Um, it's usually mixed with both, but we're really going to tune into your inner self guidance that's directly connected to the source creator, the original source creator that is beyond this matrix. That spirit part of yourself is where we're getting the answers for you to really tune into this uncertain time for you or this challenging situation to really help you through this time. And for the underlying energy or kind of the theme or what is going to best support you in this situation, you have the meditate card. You also have the blue calcite, which blue calcite really resonates with expression, expression, self-expression, expressing yourself in whatever way that looks like for you. And you do have a lot of blues and purples. So to me, this is very, you know, I, you know, guys, you guys know what I feel about the chakra systems, but they are implants put upon our original source energy here um, to siphon our energy or to keep us perpetually out of balance. But what I see with this is you being able to really balance your own energy. And with the meditate message specifically, if you are missing a pet or a loved one or a friend, just someone who's either you've cut them out, they've cut you out, they've ghosted you, you've gone your separate ways, or this person or animal or situation is just like from your past or they have passed away, whatever your current situation is, you're being asked now to really tune into that inner self guidance to you know, I guess for lack of a better word, meditate on the situation because answers will come to you as you tune into your inner guidance. And this really will help you move forward through any challenges or obstacles. But speaking of your challenges and obstacles about or regarding the situation, we're going to tune into some tarot. We're going to get one card on what, what challenge is before you as a result of these uncertain times or this challenging situation going on. Those of you that don't really have a lot of challenge going on in your life, this just might be the next challenge you're coming upon. Ooh, we have here the hanged one or the hanged man in this deck. So yeah, this really is resonating with the fact some of you just feel stuck, possibly stagnant or just unsure if something has recently ended. Just how do I go on from here? Um, my example, you know, with my dog, I mean, his hair is everywhere in this house. It's, it was shedding season right before he passed away. So I know I need to clean up all the hair, but it does remind me of him. And it is kind of comforting, even though it's messy and chaotic. Um, it just reminds me of him. So when the time is right, probably next week, I'm just going to give myself a few days to process the loss of my dog. But once that time has gone, I am going to be able to then say, okay, it was nice. Uh, having the dog, but I don't need all the hair to get on everything and just, you know, mess. So 
energetically speaking, whatever this resonates with you for your situation, the reverberating or just kind of the echo of what once was is still kind of permeating your situation. And it will be very, it, very soon for some of you. I'm seeing within the next week, if not for others of you, maybe closer to a month away, you're finally going to process or move through whatever emotions you're feeling about the situation to then be able to overcome it. So the challenge before you just might be giving yourself that time to process, to make some pros and cons lists, to really think about things or to really feel into your heart space or to connect to your inner self, to really bring you the guidance to be able to move forward because that's the sticking point for many of you is you're not able to move forward because of emotions involved, maybe even a physical reality. Someone I'm seeing here wants to be able to move or just move themselves away from an energy that is just toxic and maybe the time just isn't right yet, but there are things and measures you can do now to protect your energy to kind of ride out the storm until the storm is over and you can energetically move to another place or, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally move to another place. All right. So let's see the advice and wisdom that is coming through. And like, really, I would say the lesson you're learning maybe through this as well. Okay, so we have the Seven of Swords. So this is lying energy, deceptive energy, feeling cheated from, stolen from in some way, lied to. Maybe even, you know, for my example that I'm using with my dog passing away, just, you know, feeling like I could have used one more day or if I'd have known it was coming, I mean, I knew it was coming on, you know, I knew I didn't have years left with him. I thought I at least had months left with him. So, you know, in a way I kind of felt like, oh man, if I'd have known it was going to be, you know, today... I would have spent more time with him yesterday or, you know, all the woulda, shoulda, couldas is basically what this is saying is the lesson here is, yes, it's okay at times to go down that road of woulda, shoulda, coulda, but really what has happened, what has transpired in some capacity was meant to be and there is a lot you're learning from this situation. You know, in my example, being able to cherish the moments and even just recalling the good memories, that pros and cons list of just looking back over you know, the ways my dog enhanced my life or the ways that my dog, you know, now I have a lot of free time in the morning where I don't have to get him his glucosamine uh, vitamins. And, you know, not that I minded doing that. It was just part of my day, part of my routine. But there's a lot of recuperated time that I now can devote to other things. And yes, it's sad because every time I look at the counter, I see his glucosamine vitamins and it reminds me of you know, what I used to do as of Monday before Monday. And so this is about just really processing, allowing yourself, if you do feel lied to, cheated from, stolen from, or cheated on, stolen from, I should say, if you're feeling a certain type of way, allow yourself to feel it because trying to push it down or push it away isn't helping. And in fact, it might compound the problem in the future. So if you're feeling a certain type of way about a situation, a person, um, just something going on that you maybe even feel like lack of control or you're stuck in some way as a result of whatever this situation is, allow yourself the time to meditate and really process through this. There's no rush to have to be somewhere else. You know, again, to my example, and I hope, I hope you guys aren't uh, offended that I use personal examples. It's just a good way for me to, you know, give you guys an example or an analogy of what this could be for your life, even if it's a completely different situation than what I'm dealing with. But, you know, again, for my example, there's no need to rush the grieving process or just move on like he never existed. No, that's just not how I operate or how I want to operate through this grieving process. So those of you especially that are in grief or feeling some sort of loss, whether this is a job, a person, a situation that you feel like you had the upper hand and then you lost control or something, whatever it is for you, there's no rush to have to get to that next thing. Okay, so that's kind of the advice coming through on this, but I want to also get some oracle cards to really fill in any gaps here for you guys. Just anything else group one needs to know about this uncertain time, this challenge that is going on in their life. Okay, and we have here ascension. This is about really opening to your own spiritual guidance. Also, some of you do have some sort of close spirit animal or animal energy, but to me they feel if they are not incarnated, they are an animal you knew in this life that is supporting you, not from the soul level, but from the spirit level, from source level. There's a lot of love coming to you from that level. Um, but really, this is about going within. We have the number 33 here. So you might see the number 33 here. And this is just doubling down on 
the processing, the meditating of what your situation is. And it's not even that you have to sit here and brainstorm a solution. And in fact, sometimes when we try to brainstorm a solution to something, we can feel even more stuck than we, you know, actually are. We can move from that Seven of Swords right into that Eight of Swords of feeling even more stuck and just mentally imprisoned in some way. But what I'm seeing this is the answer or the, the lightning of the load is coming from the heart center, not from your mind. So allow yourself to get into the heart. A great way to do that is just to connect to nature, connect to people you love and care about. Um, the closer to unconditional love with these people and pets and places and things you can get, the better. <laughs> if it's a more conditional relationship, that might not be exactly the ticket here. Um, but I find that I personally have a very unconditional connection to nature. So finding that unconditional connection to nature or other people or animals or situations in your life could really help you move through this because that will bring on more of your own spiritual light, your own spiritual support. All right, what else is coming in to help group number one with these uncertain times, advice, wisdom, guidance on these uncertain times or the challenges they are currently facing? Hakate, change is important, release the past. But again, this isn't like you just have to pretend the past never happened or just completely turn on a dime and leave the past in the dust and, you know, be on to the next. That's not going to serve anybody. And in fact, it will probably double down and make it worse in the future. So this is about finding your way through, you know, change is important. It's also inevitable, but it's also a process. Again, these aren't things that just happen overnight. Releasing the past, sure. But there's this coming to awareness of the past before you can let it go that a lot of you are kind of reaching this point at this very now moment or even into the near future. We also have Moonbeam. You are on the right path. So yeah, no matter what, even if you feel like you've been in a struggle or held back or pulled off your path in some way, this detour was designed. I really see this as a lesson learned, on, not, not so much on a spirit level, because I think there's really no lessons to learn on that spirit level. Maybe more of a soul or a matrix level, there's a lesson being learned here. Um, but you're overcoming whatever obstacles you might seem are in your way because you really are on the right path here. All right. So I want to get one more, maybe two more cards from this deck. Just anything else. Group one needs to know about this uncertain time in their life, the challenge before them, just anything else they need to know about it. All right. And we have here Rosemary with Purify. Yes, you're allowing this to come through. And we also have emotions. You're purifying your emotions by allowing yourself to feel them without trying to push them away or move on because the time is now to move on. No, the time is right to move on when you're ready. And yeah, I would say you probably don't want to sit and spin your wheels in this energy forever, but so many of you are ready to make that shift from where you've been to where you're going. And it might have even been a major thing that has happened to you in the past year. I would say give it a year or so, maybe even past months or even week. Uh, you know, again, back to my example, my dog passed away Monday. It's only Thursday after the Monday he passed away. So it's it's going to take some time to allow these emotions to come in and purify everything going on. Um, I did release a lot of trauma that day. I cried and I shook and I cried and I cried and I just felt everything that I could feel. Everything that was there, I just allowed myself to feel. And I had a huge migraine that day. But the next day, I felt a little better. And then the day after that, I felt a little better. And now today... I feel even better. Um, yeah, the grief will kind of come in waves and it'll hit me at just really weird times. Again, you know, in my, especially at home, because he lived at home. He loved being at home. And every square inch of this house is just inundated with his loving presence. So there's going to be time to process. So if you feel that these emotions or this processing energy comes in waves, one day you're doing great, the next day you're falling apart, don't feel you're making backward progress here. Because this is... It's like a spiral. Yes, that grief comes back around, but you you are seeing that grief now again from a new perspective. Or if this is feeling stuck. Yes, maybe that cycle has continued, but again, it's not just a circle. It's a spiral. So you have a different awareness than you did the last time this cycle of whatever you're going through came around. So give yourself grace. Give yourself time to allow yourself to purify. Maybe even using rosemary in your cooking, um, you know, as a spice on your food, especially if you're growing your own rosemary or you're getting it from a very organic place is very, very beneficial. Um, but if you're ordering it online or going to the grocery store and getting it, I mean, that's totally fine too. But getting connected to water, getting connected also to the earth and really allowing nature to help you 
process. You know, there's very chaotic waters here with the meditate, but there's very calmer waters down here with this water element with emotions. So your emotions will possibly be all over the place as you transmute or move through whatever it is you're going through here. But this is by design to help you level up or ascend to that next greater version of yourself. Those of you that are going through a struggle or a trying time, an uncertain time, a challenge that's going on in your life, give yourself that time, that space, that grace to not feel like you have to rush or make any kind of big hard and fast decision about your life because you do have the time. Even if you've been told, oh, you have to hurry up and figure this out now. Um, no, that there, I don't really see a huge rush on whatever this is. So if you're feeling rushed to make a decision, then, you know, make the decision that is in alignment with your heart, not with your head so much. Um, so that's your message group one. I hope it resonated. Please feel free to let me know below what you thought. Any stories you want to share about what you're going through? Um, there's a lot of support in the comments here on my channel. So you can find some friends there to um, um, encourage you and help you through this as well. And as always, you guys, thanks again so very much for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, donations, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you group one right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys. Bye. Hello, group number two. Welcome to your message for uncertain times. The reason I was inspired to do this reading is because my dog, Walter, who you might have heard in a lot of my pick of cards, um, he passed away this Monday. I'm filming this on a Thursday, so the Monday before my filming this, he actually passed away. He waited for all of us to wake up, and then he took his last breath and fell over and I can't believe I can say this right now without crying because it's just been quite a roller coaster, but just going through life and having that dog with me for 15 years um, was a really beautiful and challenging experience all wrapped into one. So, um, you know, not every challenging situation is all bad or all good. Um, it's usually mixed with both, but we're really going to tune into your inner self guidance that's directly connected to the source creator, the original source creator that is beyond this matrix. That spirit part of yourself is where we're getting the answers for you to really tune into this uncertain time for you or this challenging situation to really help you through this time. So let's find out for you group two what you need to know about these uncertain times. We're gonna just kind of start with the underlying energy of this reading for you. We have the fairy tale card here. So where group one had a very watery energy, you guys have a very airy energy. This is almost like that autumn time going into winter with kind of the snow flurries going on. So some of you might have had to take a bit of a time out or hibernation or just a step back from something that was a big dream or a big desire of yours. And that has really put a wrench in some of your plans. If that message doesn't exactly resonate, this just might be kind of a life theme for you that maybe you weren't able to uh, go to college for the thing you wanted to become when you grew up or if it didn't involve college Maybe you didn't go that route you went a safer route or didn't want to take a risk or Some of you others of you might have even Fantasized about a life that you know deep down you deserve But you just haven't quite hit that mark yet or haven't experienced that life that you know deep down could be yours for the taking so this is about expanding your horizons, expanding your options. Um, but for some of you, this is coming on the heels of a timeout. We did kind of have that energy with the hang band in group one as well. Um, this to me does feel like the natural progression from group one, which is very interesting because group two comes after group one on my channel. So very interesting how that is. But what I'm really seeing with this is you guys being able to rewrite the story. And you know, your typical like old school fairy tale was usually like a lesson in and of itself or kind of a, a warning rather than something lovely and beautiful like a lot of fairy tales end up being. Um, the original fairy tales were pretty dark and dreary and scary, but this is almost like you rewriting your life to something that feels more in alignment with what we'd consider a good fairy tale, happy, happily ever after kind of vibe. I mean, in the Matrix, is there any happily ever after? I don't think so. <laughs> really like tried and true, but this is about you doing the best with what energy, what resources, what relationships, what money you have available to you now so that you can move forward into something that feels more in alignment with who you're becoming and who you've already been. So we're going to draw a card first about the challenge. This is kind of the underlying energy of what your situation is. 
Now we're going to get some information about the challenge that's before you in this uncertain time, this problem you're facing, just this kind of chaotic energy possibly for some of you. Ooh, yes, it's coming to an end, you guys. This is such a great energy to get with this because you're closing out a cycle that you don't have to keep experiencing or you definitely don't want to keep experiencing it. Um, and some of you have been working, like I was saying in group one, that it almost feels like that cycle has come back around, back around, back around. But it's not that you're working in a circle. You're more working in a spiral. So each time you come back around to this cycle, you do have more wisdom. You do have more experience under your belt. So it's going to become easier each time this cycle comes back around, whatever it is you're going through. Um, every time the cycle comes back around, you have more wisdom to draw upon for a better outcome, for a better result. So the challenge before you is to allow what wants to leave your life to leave your life. Anything meant for you will come back. If it does leave for a time, it might come back. If it's truly meant for you in the long term, it will come back to you. Um, others of you, it may come back to you in another form. It's not going to come back to you. Um, those of you that have possibly been through a recent breakup, if this person does come back, I don't see it possibly working out for the best for the long term future for you. Um, they might come back. But really what I see those of you that have been through some sort of breakup or, you know, for my example, the death of my dog recently. That doesn't mean that, you know, that dog will never come back. He might come back, but it will have to be in a different body or, you know, visiting from spirit. It can't be in the same body in the same way as the past because the past body of his has passed away. So there's no way to bring that back. You can't return in the same energy. And this is the same vibe, whether this is returning to an old job, returning to an old relationship. It's going to be a completely different dynamic. Maybe there, if it's a job, maybe there's a whole bunch of new different people working from the time that you worked there five years ago. Or if you're stepping back into a project that you put on a back burner from a while ago, you might end up like completely shifting or changing it or going in a whole new direction with it. Um, it's not going to have the same vibe. And this is actually really good with the specific pick a card that we're doing today because... We are helping you through this uncertain time, this challenging time. And by we, I mean your own inner self and my inner self and the other person watching's inner self. We're all coming together as this spirit collective in the 3D reality here or the you know material realm. Uh, some would beg to differ. I, I really do believe we've, we are more into the lower 4D just in our waking life and maybe even reaching higher 4D just kind of in our more meditative states. So really 3D isn't even really a thing anymore. We just call it 3D because it's what we can taste, touch, sense, smell, right? All the things, the tangible and the noticeable. Um, but this is shifting for you. You're gonna see new details emerge. You're going to even be, those of you that have had a big tower or death moment recently, you're gonna actually start to see the like silver lining or the benefit or the blessing in disguise of why this thing fell apart in the first place. Even if you're still in the thick of going through the the sadness or the grief or the frustration or the anger or the you know insert other negative emotion here of the situation, you're you're starting to see, okay, or eventually within the next month for sure, for sure you're going to start to see, okay, because there's no option to return to this old XYZ, now I can open this new horizon to something completely fresh, completely new, and different. And that can be scary. Let's be honest, that can be very scary, but at the same time, it can be also very exciting. But let's get some just ideas, wisdom, advice, guidance on where to go next or how to navigate through this death energy of this challenge before you, letting go of the past to be able to step into this next greater version of yourself. All right, yes, it's about allowing yourself to feel the grief. We really dove into this in group one. So if you are grieving in any capacity, there's a lot of energy for you in group one if you would like to check that out. So the advice is to allow yourself to feel whatever the heck you're feeling. And that was, again, such a theme in group one. So allow yourself to feel it. Um, allow the death of that, especially those of you that have recently broken up and you're just hoping for that reconciliation. The advice is to feel the heartbreak and then move to the four of swords, which comes after the three of swords, which is the healing process, the rest, the recuperation. Um, you know, like after a major surgery, I mean, this, this heart's going to take some, some surgery, some healing to get all these knives and swords out of it. 
and stitch it back up and let it heal. It's going to take a lot of time. We've got a lot of tears moving down. And again, the time frame is relative because if you have been going through this for a very long time, you're probably ready, more ready than someone who this is very fresh for. So of course, use your own discernment as to where you fall on the spectrum of time for how long it's going to take for you to heal and overcome. But the advice and wisdom and guidance here is to allow yourself to feel and come to terms with whatever it is you're going through. And there's no rush. Just like in group one, I don't get the like feeling here that there's any rush to this energy. Any decisions you need to make, sure, feel free to make whatever decisions you need to make. But then allow yourself the time to ruminate about the next steps or to grieve the past or whatever it is for you. And we will move this little guy out of the way because we're going to move to the next oracle card. So just kind of expanding on the wisdom or just anything else group two needs to know about this situation. And we have your confidence. And I love to see it with all that you're dealing with here because this is letting you know you're gaining the confidence, the wisdom, the motivation, the positivity, finally to move forward through this death, negative, toxic energy, toxic soup, baggage from the past that you're ready to move on from whenever you're ready to move on from it. Again, you don't have to do it right now or tomorrow or the next day. This is going to take some time, but there might be two people or two companions of sorts that are helping you through this. You're not alone for sure. And it's not just one person. It might be two. Uh, for some of you, you're going to really resonate with one person and then your own inner self acting as that kind of second guidance or second person. So you might have a, like in the material world, a person or a pet or someone you can really rely on or lean on through this. And then the other aspect of it would be your own inner self you're really leaning on and relying on through this as well. But really, you guys, with the number one here, you're, you're starting over. You know, new cycles starting in, coming in hot for you. And you're finding creative solutions to the way that you show up for yourself or to the way that your confidence starts to emerge yet again. Especially those of you who've been through a lot. You might not feel very confident just stepping out there and going on a whole new path. In fact, it might be the scariest thing you've ever done. But as you take those steps forward, you're going to gain that confidence along the way. All right, let's get some additional guidance. In these uncertain times, or whatever this uncertain thing is, this challenge, this obstacle, this chaos, whatever it is that's going on for group number two, words of guidance and wisdom on how they're moving forward. All right. So we have Diana, be one with nature. Wow, you guys are so tied to group two. I mean, there's def... Oh, sorry, you guys are group two. Group one. <laughs> there are definite nuances, but I'm really seeing some major underlying themes. So this just might be a collective thing that a lot of us are going through at this time. And again, this is a timeless reading. So whenever you're happening upon this, this could be just a big collective purge of the past, of the heartbreak, of the grief, of the moving from one version of ourselves to another. And yet again... Being one with nature, your connection to those animal companions or nature companions, your crystals, your dirt, your plants, your animals, your flora and fauna, and, you know, whatever else that you really resonate with that belongs to nature. We specifically have a deer here and a baby deer at that, a fawn. So connecting to the energy of the fawn, looking up spirit animal of the fawn, or just going to your own inner guidance as to what that could represent for you. I do see someone here that actually has a spirit animal of a deer. And so if that's you, let me know in the comments if your deer is your spirit animal. It's definitely one of mine. And the other one that I really resonate with is a bear, um, which are two very, very opposite sides of that same coin, I would say. <laughs> the deer and the bear are very different. Uh, but there is this element of, you know, protection around both symbols. I don't know what it is. Uh, but we also have lunar eclipse open the door to higher dimension. And at the time of my filming this, it is April 6th. So we do have a lunar eclipse coming up. I do believe it's in May. Um, I think the solar eclipse is first and then, which is April 20th or so. And then the lunar eclipse is like May 6th, 5th or 6th, depending where you're at in the world. I might have that flip flop. So if you are watching at the time of my posting or even later on and just want to know when that next lunar eclipse is going to happen for you, um, you know, eclipses and you guys, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know how I feel about those eclipse energies and following the moon cycles, how it is such a control system on our energy. So I don't try to purposely give the moon any more of my energy than I have to or should or need to. Um, but just knowing, you know, knowledge is power, right? Uh, so knowing what, where the eclipse is taking place, specifically in my own chart, I can kind of already plan that certain things are going to go awry. 
but also be setting at the, at the same time, at the same time, setting the intention that I'm more in control of my own chart and my own destiny, my own power, my own inner guidance, my own spirit than any moon in the sky. And just knowing what's coming, but preparing and knowing I can set those intentions to rise above anything coming in. Because um, eclipses can really shake things up, and especially lunar eclipses can really mess with those emotions, especially if you are in grief or heartbreak or loss of something. Uh, the eclipses can really come in and wake that energy up, especially those that have kind of laid dormant, or if you're already going through a grieving process, it can really amplify it to something huge because the nodes are included north node which really expands and explodes things and then the south node which also detaches you from things and when the lunar eclipse happens the nodes are involved the eclipses are determined by where the nodes are transiting so it's very important uh where your nodes are and i because because the nodes are so demonized at least in vedic astrology you know they literally are two sides of the demon the head and the tail of the demon <laughs> um i actually look at the rahu k2 or north node south node in my own chart as my way of breaking out of the matrix and you can look at yours that way as well um, because they've kind of taken the energy that's already there and they've inverted everything so everything that's good is bad and bad is good and up is down and in is out so use your own research on that but you guys are really seeing things to like a higher level to another dimension you're realizing that certain ways of being you were really playing small and that's why this death energy came in to help you rise out of that settling energy and yes it can be difficult it could be painful it could be sad and maybe even the situation you're currently going through has nothing to do with you settling you know as an example with my dog passing away I didn't settle for him I mean maybe in some capacity I did he was he was a very challenging dog especially in his early years um, he just didn't ever settle down he was almost untrainable but gosh dang it I loved that dog he was such a part of me and my family and you know it's, it's about making the most of what we have, but when that energy leaves our lives, he was a very chaotic dog, but toward the end he had mellowed out, but he had a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress in his life, just picking up on all the energies going on on this planet at this time, because I know he is a very high level advanced soul from beyond this matrix, for sure, for sure. So this is taking the good with the bad, and now that he is no longer physically here, you know, it, it does clear up a lot of energy in my home, at least for the time being, to be able to devote the time I spent taking care of him to now doing something else. And so you can see silver linings and things. Yes, I would much rather have my dog back here and living, but he was in pretty poor health the last year or so specifically, and I know he's in a better place. So really, the transmutation of leaving that body to go beyond wherever he is now was such a relief for him, for sure. And it's us that are left to be sad, but I don't feel at all that he is sad in any way right now, um, at all. He's free. So, yes, you're freeing yourself from one old version of yourself. So it's beautiful, yet maybe very bittersweet for some of you because of the loss of some relationship or situation or perceived loss of something actually is going to kind of be that fertilizer in the soil for you to plant a new seed for a new beginning. All right, what else? Does group two need to know about this uncertain situation, this challenge before them, just whatever chaos they're going through, challenges, sadness, grief, whatever it is they're going through that just doesn't feel so good right now. Advice and wisdom. We have Wisteria with meditation. So yet again, another nod to group number one because that was their card, meditate. So yes, uh, so yeah, meditation can really help you work through this stuff. And I wouldn't say meditation as far as doing a guided meditation and you know connecting to spirit guides and all of this, no. I see this more just natural. Going out in nature if it's possible for you and connecting to the trees, wisteria if you can, that would be very helpful. Or just even con connecting to the energy of wisteria to aid you through your grief could help. And maybe even looking um, spiritual meaning of wisteria to see if there's something that resonates for you or just tuning into your own inner guidance. That's something I do as well, rather than just trusting Google to all of my spiritual unlocking and uh, unfolding. And we also have cauldron transformation. Yes. But it's through the death energy that's bringing this transformation about for you and meditating, just really feeling those emotions and... Um, ruminating on where you've been, where you are, where you want to go, all can help and benefit you. But there is a major transformation 
at, in place right now currently. And I just saw a really big bright yellow butterfly and then a bright blue butterfly flying, like leaving the chrysalis, drying their wings and flying away. Like you're about to take flight. You're about to open that door to that higher dimension, but it's gonna take some confidence. It's not all gonna happen overnight and don't rush yourself. There really is no rush here um, with what you're dealing with. You're gonna find your way through. So that is your message group too. I hope this resonated and I hope it helped you at this time, especially those of you that are grieving. If you did have a death in the family or the loss, the death of a relationship or a friendship or, you know, just something really difficult that feels like your heart is literally breaking, my heart does go out to you. It is very difficult to lose something that meant so much to us. So big hugs to all of you that are really going through those, those death throes of something right now. And those of you that are more just maybe grieving something from the past. Again, my heart still goes out to you as well. But I just wanted to say thanks again so much, you guys, for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, donations, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, group two, bye. Hello, group number three. Welcome to your message for uncertain times. The reason I was inspired to do this reading is because my dog Walter, who you might have heard in a lot of my pick of cards, um, he passed away this Monday. I'm filming this on a Thursday, so the Monday before my filming this, he actually passed away. He waited for all of us to wake up and then he took his last breath and fell over and I can't believe I can say this right now without crying because it's just been quite a roller coaster, but just going through life and having that dog with me for 15 years um, was a really beautiful and challenging experience all wrapped into one. So, um, you know, not every challenging situation is all bad or all good. Um, it's usually mixed with both, but we're really going to tune into your inner self guidance that's directly connected to the source creator, the original source creator that is beyond this matrix. That spirit part of yourself is where we're getting the answers for you to really tune into this uncertain time for you or this challenging situation to really help you through this time. So let's go ahead and find out, uh, you know, your message through these uncertain times, this challenge that's before you. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna start with just kind of the underlying energy. And we have the blessed card, but it doesn't look too blessed to me. I mean, yeah, it looks calm and serene, but it's very contained. It's like one of those cloche domes is over this moon and this uh, tree and the stars and everything are contained within this dome and it really does remind me of my analogy I always use about the snow globe on the table aka the matrix. We think we are just this you know containment of this matrix and really all we all that is is but this very small amount or portion of what is actually reality and a lot of what's in the snow globe is very distorted. Think of looking through like glass that's kind of domed or bubbled in some way. It's very warped reality. Um, you're not actually seeing things as they are. You're seeing things through kind of an, a veil or an illusion. Um, so, so many of you at this time, it's almost like you're putting your own bubble or walls around you, which can be very good through some of this chaotic energy to help keep the storms out. But at the same time, you might be blocking your blessings or you know, shielding yourself from those blessings coming in because you're blocking that energy, you're protecting your energy so much, you're not allowing those blessings or the good to come in. As you block out the bad, you're also blocking out some of the good. Um, and especially those of you that are really working to protect your energy, there's different ways by setting different intentions to allow the good to come through, but to kind of check the bad at the door, so to speak. And remember, this matrix wouldn't be so you know, apt or just on the move to bombard us um, and hurt us and tax our energies and siphon our energies if we weren't so powerful. So this is letting you know how powerful you are that you can manifest your own blessings. It just might be that lately you've been going about it in a way that's really not working. And ways that might have worked in the past, like law of attraction and visual vision boards and doing visualization and uh, writing out affirmations, Maybe these things had worked in the past and now they're not working anymore. Or certain things you once did that would bring your blessings in just aren't really hitting the mark anymore. But this is because you're leveling up and you are really kind of seeing things from a higher perspective. So doing things the old way is going to still not really maybe possibly get you those old results, but you're expecting those old results. They're not coming. 
So you're going to have to start to find or navigate and, and try out new ways of bringing in blessings. Okay, so let's see the challenge before you, specifically in the realm of this uncertain situation. But just know, because you have the blessed card, the underlying energy of this whole reading and this whole situation for you is that this is going to, you're going to see this as a blessing in disguise. It might feel like things are contained or blocked off or maybe even completely falling apart for some of you at this time. But just know that this whole situation, this uncertain time you're going through right now is actually acting as a huge blessing in disguise. I mean, one prime example I can use for my husband, I won't use my dog example. I used my dog um, passing away earlier this week as kind of the example for groups one and two, but I'm really feeling the call to kind of uh, do something different for you guys. And my husband recently left a toxic work situation. I mean, he's still there. He's writing out his two weeks at the time of my filming, but he's very now much, very much looking forward to the next job. Um, but it took this job that he absolutely loved and adored, but was kind of maybe possibly just a capping point for his potential. Um, it took things to get toxic after the last merger they had um, for him to finally start to realize that maybe this isn't my happily ever after at this company. And a different company reached out. And at first he wanted to just push it away because he already had the job he wanted. But then he really started examining, like, maybe I don't have the job I want. I mean, on, I mean, day to day, I may be doing some things I do like, but the culture is toxic. Some of the people are toxic. Some of the people are amazing as well. Um, but it took him having this wonderful experience turned toxic for him to finally realize that, okay, my time here is done. I need to go somewhere else. And you, I think you guys have reached out points as well. But let's see the challenge before you during this uncertain time, this trying time, this challenging time. Chaos, stagnancy, whatever it is you've got going on. We're going to read into this, the challenge before you. Yeah, the six of swords, or sorry, uh, the four of swords. So this is being able to heal. So some of you might have had some challenging times in actually healing or overcoming or finding a new way forward. Again, the old things you used to use to heal your life or to enhance your life or to manifest a better life aren't working anymore. And not only are they not working, they're broken. All of these swords are broken. But look, she's got the infinity symbol and the staircase of ascension, like ascending to a greater version of herself right before her. It's a very magician energy, very uh, strength energy, the Leo the lion energy to help support you to stand in your own inner self, your own true spirit, to bring you to a higher version where you don't need containment, you don't need walls, you don't need boxes to contain your lovely spirit. You're gonna be expanded and free and not so under the control of the matrix system or the AI algorithms and all the you know things that we've come to know on this you know matrix realm, this plane that we, this plane of existence that we're currently in. So you are, possibly looking for new healing modalities, those of you that have selected group three. Or again, the old healing modalities just aren't working the way they once were. But this is letting me know that there is this period right now of rest, of recuperation, of rejuvenating your energy. It's a bit of a retrograde energy that you're going through right now. And at the time of my filming, we're not quite to Mercury retrograde, but it is coming. And of course, this is a timeless reading. So whatever retrogrades are currently taking place or about to take place for you, uh, this is letting you know that this is going to be a very um, enhanced time for you to really level up. And then when those retrogrades go back direct, you can really quantum leap yourself to a whole new version of who you once were. We even have the sleeping moon here. So yes, making sure you're getting enough sleep. And that might even be something that's been interrupted or very difficult for you is to fall asleep or stay asleep at night. Or, you know, even having to take a lot of naps or just feeling very tired throughout the day and not able to take naps, maybe because of your work situation or just your lifestyle, you're not really uh, taking naps and you really wish you could because you're tired midday, have a midday crash. Um, but this is about finding a new way forward to getting that rest. I'm really seeing a lot of self-care being a major theme for you guys to help you through this uncertain time as well. But let's see that guidance, wisdom, just kind of what's what's after the challenge, where you're going from here. Ooh, we have the Knight of Cups. I love to see it. Yes, this is about feeling much more emotionally fulfilled in the new direction you're walking, which for so many of you is taking that next step up in your, you know, I know like the word ascension is kind of triggering. It kind of really reminds you of like the new age, you know, new earth, ascension. And I don't really mean it like that. This is just 
really, instead of ascending, it's almost like we're descending back into our spirit. But one of the best ways we can connect to our spirit, because we are, we are spirit incarnated in a human body, not a human body, you know, experiencing spirit. At the heart of us, we are spirit. So we don't need to learn all these spirit lessons. Maybe soul lessons, yes. In the cloche dome of the matrix, the snow globe of the matrix, yes, we are having all these soul lessons, soul contracts, soul mates, soul, 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 uh, Akashic records and, you know, keeping the score, karma, all this. This is all matrix construct. Our true essence, our true spirit doesn't need to learn any lessons because it is God. We are that fractal of that infinite source. Uh, whether you want to call it God, source, creator, whatever, whatever you want to call that essence that is in us from beyond the veil, from beyond the matrix, that doesn't need to learn anything. It would love to possibly experience some things, but really this is you feeling emotionally fulfilled in what you're doing, the next steps for you, moving forward. But the nights are always about movement. So moving forward, maybe some of one here is actually professing their love to someone. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be romantic. This could just be letting your friends, your family members know, hey, I love you so much. You mean so much to me. Maybe a, a gesture um, that is a kind gesture, a gift, um, you know, just telling them, giving them a really amazing compliment. Um, but mean it. Mean the compliment. Let it be from your heart. Let it be true. Um, because this can really strengthen the bond that you have with somebody. Um, that they genuinely know you care is such a, a, an empowering thing for somebody in your life. And maybe you also, because this is your reading, getting that from someone that means something to you. Or you're hearing something from someone and it makes them mean more to you because you didn't realize how strong your connection was until that moment. So there's a strengthening of bonds as a result of possibly moving away from old bondages. Not, I'm not seeing bonds as a good thing from the past. This is like more bondage. Like you're feeling bound to something or bonded to something in a very codependent or toxic way. You're moving beyond that and finding a, a more interdependent way of showing up in your relationships, in your hobbies, in your, you know, just day-to-day -day working and living hours. You're finding a more interdependent way to associate with nature and your material wealth and your car and your home and the things in your home. You're finding a more interdependent rather than codependent way to intermingle and intermix with the things around you, the people around you, the situations afoot in your life. All right, so let's go ahead and get some further guidance on these uncertain times for group number three. Any other messages for group three? Advice and wisdom to really move through these uncertain and trying times. We have empowerment, and I love to see it. And of course, I love when the sunflowers come out in my readings because, you know, love it. Okay, so empowerment. We also have the number 18. One is about a new beginning. Eight is about taking action, but you add them up to a nine, and you get this sense of purpose behind this new beginning, this new action. But there also is an ending or a closing of one cycle, so you can start another, which has been such a theme in all three groups. So if you felt called to any of the other groups, there definitely is this uh, ending to start new beginning energy in both the other groups as well. But this is about expansion. We're not sitting behind this dome or under the dome anymore. We're breaking the glass of the dome, shattering the glass ceiling, if you will, and just going above and beyond what we thought was even possible. And because we have the blessed word here, we also have prospering and you know, expanding. It's very Jupiter energy, which is prosperity, abundance, expansion. It's your spiritual connection. It's connecting to the divine as well, which empowering your own spirit in the human body is one of the best things you can do. But it's a very grounded energy. Uh, we can be spiritual all day long, yes, because that is our true essence. But if we don't incorporate that into our day-to-day -day mundane, very physical reality, we're really missing a lot of potential here because we are supposed to be focused on the material world. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. It is a central focus, at least for this point of your consciousness right now. Yes, we can tune into those more spiritual gifts and spiritual, you know, knowings and understandings. Uh, but if we don't then take those spiritual knowings and understandings and incorporate them into our material world, we're really missing a big chunk of what we're here to experience. So this is about the bringing the as above to the so below and the as within to the so without. So it's, yes, I love it. It's a great energy. You guys are really shaking things up to really level up and move on from, 
you know, either being so spiritual. I'm seeing this almost like a spiritual burnout for some of you. Dark night of the soul, like perpetual dark night of the soul or, you know, on this perpetual healing journey and you never heal or the ways that you thought you had healed are now coming back around and seemingly worse than ever. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong or that, you know, any of that it doesn't mean that. But it just means you're at a higher version or a higher state of your own awareness and your own consciousness that some of those old ways of doing things are almost archaic. It's almost like trying to, uh, you know, go to your college trigonometry class and you're bringing crayons with you. Um, I know that's kind of a weird analogy, but that's the first thing that came to mind. It's like, it's they're, they're thicker and chunkier writing. It's going to be difficult to determine, you know, you're going to need bigger pieces of paper to write out your problem and your equations and stuff. Um, where it would be much better to have a fine tip mechanical pencil to work out all your equations. You know, bringing the right tools for the job is really what I see. And so many of you are relying on a lot of, you know, old spiritual ways, uh, a lot of new age practices, possibly old healing modalities. We kind of already touched on that. Um, just putting your power outside of yourself into spirit guides or, you know, into chance even just like, oh, if, if the next light is green, then I'm going to make this decision with my life. No, this is you taking your power back on so many levels that you're not going to need a lot of these like almost spiritual coping mechanisms is what I'm going to call it. You're really tuning into your inner spirit, your true spirit and connecting directly to the source and cutting out all the middlemen energy and entities and just things that are not serving you anymore. It's such an empowering message here, you guys. This is so beautiful. And we got a right speed error. My apologies, group three. I don't even remember where I was. Hopefully we saw most of this. I didn't look up for a while. And I even thought at the beginning of your reading, wow, we haven't had that right speed error for all three piles. I must have jinxed it. But look, there's us utilizing those old ways of being, old ways of thinking to limit ourselves. The second that thought occurred to me, right speed error occurred sometime right after that. So... Apologies, you guys. All right, group three. Overcoming your current uncertain times, trying times, challenges before you. We have new moon, fresh start, new beginning. Yes. And you guys know, if you've been following me for any length of time, at, at this point, you know what I feel about the moon, how it's actually a control structure. It's not even natural to this planet at all. It's I call it kind of just like a satellite. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, it's very, I mean, I'm not saying it's fake, but it's not organic. So I would say it's more inorganic rather than it's fake. Um, I don't know. Some of the tuning in that I've done on certain timelines, the moon is but like a projection or like a hologram. It's not even, phys there's no physicality to it. But I guess you could argue that there is no physicality to any of it. Because even our solid, you know, bodies that feel very solid, there is a lot of space between the atoms and really everything is just space, right? Um, but I really do see this new beginning, this fresh start coming in hot for you guys, and you're going to feel so much more empowered than you were. But it's going to have to be coming as a result of you letting go of those coping mechanisms or old ways of doing things to step into new versions of yourself. And then we have Sekhmet, courage, truth, and shadow work. Yeah, it's about finding that courage, that confidence that we were talking about in group two. So if called the group two, there's a major confidence message there. And we really were tuning into that strength energy, you know, with the infinity symbol and, of course, also the magician. Yes, the courage and truth and shadow work. And here's a kind of, I guess, double-edged sword about shadow work. Sometimes we can get so immersed in diving even deeper and trying to uncover things even deeper and even deeper that we can almost, again, just get lost in this perpetual state of dark night of the soul or shadow work or, you know, thinking we're healing and we're actually making more harm for ourselves than good. And I even personally got into that kind of theme from the end of 2020 all the way through the beginning of 2022. I was in this just perpetual dark night of the soul. And then it kind of came back in hot at the end of 2022 into early 2023. And I'm still kind of coming out of it. Um, but at the end of 2022, going into 2023, I had that, what my friend Amber calls it, the rude awakening from the awakening. I was just calling it the awakening from the awakening. And then she so beautifully and eloquently put it, the rude awakening from the awakening. Um, but this just lets us know that, yes, we can spin our wheels and all of this healing forever. And there is a time and a place for healing. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely there is. But when we can almost, <laughs> it's very interesting. It's almost like I just heard factory reset. Because what is our true essence? It is spirit. 
So if we just factory, almost like just factory reset ourselves back to spirit, back into true alignment with our essence, our spirit, we can, you know, offload a lot of this junk, a lot of these limitations. We think, well, this trauma happened when I was a kid, this trauma, and we almost just wear that as like either a badge of honor or as kind of an, our identity or this victim or martyrdom that we kind of get stuck in, but we can go back to factory reset. I know, I know it sounds so woo woo and out there and I'm not trying to tell anyone to spiritually bypass either. It's gonna be different for each of you. So I think that can just be some bit of homework for you guys to really tune in with your own empowerment. What does factory reset back to your spirit mean to you? What does that look like for your healing journey? What does that look like? It's gonna be different for each of you. So do some maybe journaling or some introspecting on what that means specifically for you. But that's going to help you through this uncertain, this challenging, this trying time that you're currently going through or have been going through for some of you for years. But this is about tuning back into your inner self and quit putting all of that energy and sovereignty into the hands of other outside authorities to you, be them spirit guides or political leaders or church leaders or, um, you know, even family members that you feel like you have to do what they say. And you've got, I just now noticed you've got the lion actually in two cards here. And we were really picking up on that Leo energy with that infinity symbol there too. So wherever your house of Leo is, this is where things are really changing. You're expanding. So for example, if that's your 11th house, you might be letting go of a lot of connections you thought were authentic and realizing they were very superficial or very matrixy, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and finding new connections. Uh, that would make you a Libra Ascendant if you have that 11th house Leo. Um, I'm a Libra Ascendant, so I can totally attest to this. A lot of connections I had had in the spiritual community have either ghosted or, you know, there was a falling out. And it just all felt very unexpected in ways and in other ways very inevitable. So this just might be a big shakeup for you in whatever area Leo rules in your chart. And if you have planets also in Leo... I'm really seeing Vedic Leo. So you might even be a Virgo in more Western astrology and resonate with this as well. So if you're, um, you know, whatever your degree in Virgo is, subtract 24. If you're still Virgo, that's not your message. But if that subtraction of 24 degrees puts you into Leo, this is definitely your message. Um, but everybody watching, whatever resonates for you, whether it's your Leo or Virgo house, um, very Leo energy. Wherever the star Regulus lands in your chart, uh, that's where, that's the Leo energy we're tuning into. So if you're Vedic astrology, it's going to be actually in the house and sign of Leo. If it's Western astrology, it might possibly be in Virgo. You might want to look into that for yourself. Just a bit of extra homework for those that like the extra homework. All right. What else? Messages of wisdom and guidance for these uncertain times for group three. These challenging times are going through. What do they need to know? How can they move through this? Okay. And we have Amethyst, Acceptance and Courage. And we have the Courage here with the Sekhmet card as well. So this is going to take some courage. And specifically because Amethyst does resonate with helping people overcome addictions. Um, and I'm not just saying like drug and alcohol addictions. I'm seeing this as like addictions to playing small or being in certain systems in the matrix or limiting yourself. We've all done it. We all continue to do it. And, you know, it's going to take a lot of intention to break out of these uh, different systems but having the courage to accept who you are on a deeper level and to move out of the snow globe and start to you know really resonate and align with that inner self even more but again aligning with the inner self but integrating it into your physical human reality because this is where we're at right now so if we just completely bypass the whole human aspect and just try to live up in the stars up in the clouds it's going to be very difficult in the near future for all of us because we need to get grounded. Uh, but also it's about connecting or uniting with our own inner selves and allowing that to spread out in our material world. And then we have Belladonna, risk and reward. So the risk is going to be worth it. You guys might even be taking a risk by completely shattering that glass ceiling or removing the box and giving yourself unlimited, untapped potential for your future. You can go anywhere. The nights are movement, they're motion. You're going somewhere new and it's going to take that courage, double, double uh, message of courage, really triple message of courage because we also have the empowerment card as well. So there's three messages of, hey, 
tune into who you are on that deeper level and know how amazing you are and start living from that knowledge of how amazing you are and stop playing small or catering or putting your power to all of these other entities, systems, uh, guides, political leaders, people outside of you that you think know better than you know. Nobody knows you better than your spirit. So start going directly to the inner authority, which is your spirit, to get the information you need, and that will bring in your rewards, your blessings. We're coming all the way full circle to the beginning of the reading with the blessings coming in as a result of you stepping out of that old version of yourself, walking away from the old things that just are not going to serve your future. The old ways of operating are not going to bring and open new doors. And there are new doors, new beginnings, fresh starts, very ripe for the taking for you. But you're going to have to have the courage to make that, take that risk and it will bring that reward. I hope this helped you feel better about whatever situation you've been going through. This to me does feel like a very collective purging, cleansing, death, and then rebirth energy that a lot of us are going through currently. It's going to show up in our lives differently for sure, for sure. But we're all feeling the underlying energy of now's the time. It's time to break up with those old habits and ways of being and start something new. So many of us are on that journey. So that is your message of group three. I hope it resonated. Please feel free to let me know below any thoughts you have about this, any stories you want to share about any uncertain time that you are currently going through. There is a lot of support to be found in my comment section. So don't hesitate to reach out or just to see, you know, if anyone else is going through the same thing, because you will find they probably are. And as always, you guys, thanks again so very much for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, your donations, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you, Group 3, right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys, much love. Bye.